Hi guys, we're going to get started now with a shorter video about primate cities and rank size rule with a little touch of world cities as well. We get two uh, essential questions that are directly related to one another. First is how and why do cities vary in size and influence? And then secondly, what is the consequence of the differences between uh, various, size, various cities of different sizes? First term we need to know is the primate city or primate cities. A primate city is one that is a city that has twice the population of the next largest city in a given place. So let's stop there and immediately look at the graphic. Paris is a primate city. The population of Paris is tw over twice that of the next largest city in France. Next largest city being Marseille, shall followed shortly thereafter by uh, Aix-en-Provence. Um, so the a primate city, by a definition, has to have double the population of the next largest city. But more importantly is the product of that population. So when you have a population that's twice the, that's twice the size of any other place, that city is going to become a cultural hub. It's In some senses, it's going to encompass what it means to be from that place. So for, for example, there's uh, Paris often is sort of has this romanticized idea that the way of living in Paris is the definition of what it means to be French. That's certainly, again, very romanticized, very idealistic version. But the idea being that a, a, a primate city not only has such a large population, but also has an enormous cultural influence. Um, more often, that cultural influence is going to drive economic activity as well. So primate cities are often an economic powerhouse of that of a given place. Um, and sometimes, sometimes the primate city also has the political institutions, so the, the, usually the, the seat of the federal government. But that's not a given, nor is that necessarily a requirement of a primate city. So I put this in italics because you don't necessarily have to copy it, but a primate city is usually measured by its cultural impact, which in turn often means that the primate city has strong economic influence. But it's really, again, this just romanticized idea of what it means to be from that place usually is, is housed in those who live in that primate city. Another example there is in Mexico. Mexico's primate city is Mexico City. You can see that Mexico City has 20 million people, um, and then in the border regions, uh, it's, I mean, it drops off enormously in the rest of the other city, the major cities of Mexico, which I'll come back to momentarily. This is just a quote, no need to copy it, but it just is a, a nice summation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out what that means. Um, summation of what a primate city is. So we've got a country's leading city is always disproportionately large and exceptionally expressive of national capacity and feeling. It's exceptionally ex a representation of what it means to be from this place and what it is this place can do. The primate city is commonly at least twice as large as the next largest city and more than twice as significant. So that kind of gives us the, the idea of what a primate city looks like and feels like. Some examples of primary cities, you must know these. You must know these. Um, we in Paris, I already mentioned this, that Paris, France has 2.2 million people. Marseille, the next largest city, um, is 800,000. So you can see that's, of course, the Eiffel Tower at the top of Paris. Moving down here, we've got uh, London. And uh, in the UK, it's in London has 6.9 million people, and the next largest city is Birmingham with 1 million people. Pretty enormous difference there. So London clearly is a primate city. It's also, again, just sort of embodiment of, of British uh, identity. Again, I'm, I feel silly saying that because that does, surely doesn't apply to all the people in the country, but is a, contributes to this idea of a primate city. Mexico City has 9.8 million people. Um, Wait, hold on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. That last graphic showed us the, the entire uh, surrounding regions as well. Okay, that makes a little more sense. But the city itself um, has 9.8 million people, and Guadalajara, the next largest city, has 1.7 million people. Um, Bangkok, Thailand, featured on the right there, has 6 million people, and the next largest city has 278. That's an enormous difference. So clearly, clearly a cultural and economic hub there in Bangkok. Uh, Non-examples. Bold this, star this, put a box around it so we're clear that these are n places that do not have a primate city. Um, the U.S. does not have a primate city. So if you included the MSA, the Metropolitan Statistical Area of uh, New York, then New York would encompass 21 million people within, so it short, follows shortly ever after by L.A. with 15 million people. So there's, there, that does not follow um, a primate city. India does not follow primate, does not have a primate city. China does not have a primate city. Canada does not have a primate city. So you'll notice, you'll notice a trend a little bit here. Um, well, you, we'll get back to this, but there's going to be some key differentiating features of the countries that do and do not have these primate cities. 
Uh, the characteristics that encourage the primacy of one city over another. In other words, what makes it so one city has primacy, both in terms of population and in cultural influence? What makes one of the cities more significantly impactful than another? One key reason why you often have primary uh, cities is because of colonialism. When colonial powers came in to take over and control these colonies, they often would funnel resources specifically into given places and make that the political, cultural, and economic hub of the country. Um, industrial agglomeration, those, those uh, units keep looping back together. That if you have industry in one place, that will then in turn attract more industry, driving the de overall development of a country so, or of a, of a given place. So we see again that multiplier effect, that the one industry is going to benefit from the transportation and labor costs um, and resources available in one place and leading to increasing development in one region. we got the rural to urban migration. So as people continue then to come from rural areas to that urban area, and we get that, can, that actually loops all the way back to chain migration. If one person comes, then it's going to encourage people from the family and friends to do the same. So large-scale urban um, to rural migration is going to contribute to the primacy of one state over another. Um, and transportation systems. If you have trans effective transportation systems that lead people to one place versus another, then that's going to encourage the primacy. Once one place is going to emerge um, with greater power and greater population than another. Primate cities can, 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 I'm not saying are, but can be an indication of a lesser developed country. That makes sense and it loops right back to what I just said about colonialism. And some, many of the lesser developed countries of the world are product of colonialism or former colonial territories. Um, so the, that make, they are often, a primate city make, is often an indication of a lesser developed country. Part of it also being because the primate cities, they act like a parasite. They suck up resources from all over the, that could be better distributed across a country. If a country has a primate city, that can be an indication that all of the resources are going to one area of the country as opposed to being more evenly distributed throughout the country. So, for example, if you look over here at my map of Mexico and that surrounded area, that region that's the core region, then you can see that Mexico City's enormous influence is actually going to, to negatively impact the rest of the country. Well, um, theoretically, but is, is going to the Mexico City's enormous cultural and economic power and population size is going to almost suck up resources that could be better distributed to the periphery regions, the areas near the border and to the Yucatan Peninsula region. So primate cities can be an indication of an LDC, but let me immediately explain why that's not necessarily true. I gave you examples of Paris. I gave you examples of London that are primate cities in most developed countries of the world, but it is often common to find primate cities in lesser developed countries. This can also be connected to the concept of a world city. So a world city is a city that's closely integrated into a global economic system because they're the center of the flow for information and capital. World city is really the idea that your city is a world player. You don't just have a strong economy. You don't just have a cultural influence. You have global influence. The top tier of world cities are London, Tokyo, and Hong Kong. The second tier for world cities would be Chicago, D.C., L.A., Brussels, Frankfurt, Zurich, Sao Paulo, which is misspelled, and uh, Singapore. Third tier there is the Gamma Cities, uh, San Francisco, Buenos Aires, Sydney, Johannesburg in uh, South Africa. So you've got a tier of world cities. and can also be the result of... Um... Okay. Okay. <laughs>